Natasha Stasiuk finds her inner calm through golf. This isn't always easy as travelling and preparing for golf and competing can be stressful, but thanks to her determination and focus, her pleasure in playing golf has allowed her to achieve some great personal milestones that might just inspire others into the game. Let's meet Natasha in our latest Edgar podcast, a young Canadian golfer on the up, something that's always great to see. Natasha Stasiuk from Oakville, Ontario, clearly loves the game of golf. When considering her own improving performances, winning tournaments and helping to fly the flag for Canada, she will agree this is partly due to a lot of hard work and support. But success for her also means the joy she feels in playing on a golf course, looking for the perfect swing, all an antidote to the anxieties of life. For her, it seems golf is a mix of joy and wanting to take her sport seriously, get the most out of it, for all the health benefits it offers her. Natasha explains to us just what golf means. It's my happy place. It's where I feel the most confident in my life. It's where I feel free and I don't feel judged. Back in high school, and I still deal with it this to this day, people say golf isn't a sport. That hurts me terribly, because I'm like, well, golf is a sport. You see it on the TV, you see it in the Olympics, you see other people with disabilities even playing it too. And golf's very important to me. It's made me who I am today. At the age of 26, this golfer is becoming more used to the pressure of the first tee, more experienced in gathering a strength for the challenge ahead, while not forgetting the challenges of the past. Living with autism for Natasha includes also managing an auditory processing condition. This can be evident when completing a scorecard or following the speech of a stranger. She and her father Peter say that often when people are in their third sentence in their conversation with her, Natasha is still thinking about the first sentence. Such an issue for an anxious person can leave them feeling that they have a mountain to climb, and that's if their condition is treated with respect to begin with. It isn't hard to imagine the myriad of difficulties facing her growing up. Looking back, it makes Natasha emotional when considering how these challenges affected everything from in the classroom to her early days on the golf course. I have an intellectual disability, so auditory processing, so it's hard for me to understand things as, a, as I call a normal person, so it takes me longer to understand. So when I was younger, I couldn't count my score. I still struggle to this day. Sometimes during her early years in golf, other golfers would take advantage confusing her, adding a few strokes onto her score in order to win themselves. Thankfully, her parents, and later by extension the game of golf itself, have been saviours for her in many ways. Her dad Peter came to the rescue with the scoring issue by following the play himself and ensuring that the record was always fair and accurate. From there, his daughter's golf development gathered pace as confidence grew. The records are now certainly accurate, recording an improving player off around a five handicap. A competitor in all three of the USGA's US Adaptive Opens so far, a five-time winner of provincial events in Ontario, a three-time Canadian champion, representing a country in the Special Olympics in Berlin, and at the time of writing, preparing to debut in the leading event series in G4D, Golf of the Disabled, playing for the Canadian team in the recent G4D tour Betfred British Masters at the Belfry England, held at the end of August. In this tournament, Natasha and fellow Canadian Curtis Barclay finished in a very creditable fourth place for their country, Natasha being commended by the tournament director, Edgar's Mark Taylor, for her adapting well to a challenging format which saw the players competing in four-ball better ball on the first day and the alternate shot foursomes format on the second day. Natasha hadn't played this before and it was a great learning experience. Like many folk in Canada, Natasha Stasiuk actually hails from the far east of old Europe, but her start in life was precarious. Born in Russia, she was left as an orphan in a crumbling hospital. Her first year of life endured in sickness and some neglect. Ontario residents Peter and Sandra Stasiuk adopted Natasha when she was 13 months old and she was soon able to thrive in a new family in Oakville. Peter recalls noting that while early language was difficult for her, Natasha's early movement skills and hand-eye coordination were very good. 
From the outset, Natasha loved sport, as did her family, and she tried swimming, soccer, gymnastics, softball, ballet and ice hockey before golf. Everyone loved the hockey, family and friends all supporting National Hockey League team Toronto Maple Leafs. Many ice hockey players learned balance and timing with stick and puck, and so did Natasha. When she was eight years old, in her third grade at school, PJ of Canada professional coach Nick Starchuk noted her ability to hit a ball when he attended Natasha's school gym class to introduce the kids to golf. Family folklore now has it that when Natasha was invited by Nick for a golf lesson at nearby Glen Abbey Golf Club, this supportive coach pointed to a hole on the putting green 30 feet away and encouraged the youngster to putt towards the flag as a starting point. Natasha did just that and knocked the long putt straight into the cup, a shot that if not heard around the world certainly raised eyebrows in parts of Oakville. An aptitude for striking the ball was nevertheless a long way from having the temperament to develop a golf game. Learning is often a big challenge for a youngster with autism. Thankfully, Natasha would find a key mentor in PGA coach Carrie Vaughan. But as she grew into adulthood, having a non-visible disability which isn't easily understood presents a significant set of hurdles. Added to the disability, people's perception of the issues can only add to the pressure. I don't have a physical. When people look at me, they like, you don't have a disability. But I'm like, it's all in the brain in my disability. It's like a big puzzle piece in my brain. Fortunately, Carrie Vaughan took Natasha under her wing as part of her girls' junior golf programme at Glen Abbey Golf Club. Natasha's mum, Sandra, remembers, It was quite a large group, but Carrie was instrumental in helping and working with Natasha and her challenges. Carrie was very encouraging, patient, inclusive, very empathetic and worked with Natasha on every aspect of her game including learning the rules and especially her swing, which people comment on a lot. Natasha's mum continues, Carrie gave Natasha the confidence to keep trying, eventually play in a tournament and then keep competing even though she struggled. She did such a wonderful job and for her all the juniors were like her family. As a female player herself, Carrie could not have been a better mentor for Natasha as she found her way in the game. Carrie Vaughan would later move to another club and today Natasha works with Ralph Bauer, the PGA pro out of Hamilton Golf and Country Club, and together they are fine-tuning the swing that Carrie helped to shape. When feeling positive, Natasha talks of autism as like a superpower, but at the same time she doesn't want to be pigeonholed concerning certain traits associated with intellectual disabilities. One golfing example is that you might expect someone with autism to excel in practice, absorbed in the repetition of the task in the safe personal space, but Natasha actually loves to have fun on the course with a trusted friend, playing to express herself. Practicing for three hours just isn't her thing. For the three hours, I was like, I said to my, I can't do this for three hours. Like, I have to be in a different scenery every couple of hours. Like, for golf, you're moving constantly. And if you're at the range just hitting golf balls for 30 minutes, you lose me by the first 20 minutes. I, I don't know why, why I'm in this sport if I can't concentrate, but it's just something that works with me, that golf does. The changing nature around her is Natasha's haven, and you can guess the value of this for someone whose condition has led to her having feelings of depression and an ongoing battle with anxiety. And it helps, Natasha says, to work hard, and interestingly, to aim high. I'm a 4.9 handicap. It's been lower, but anxiety, depression have taken it high. I would like to be the best golfer I can be. I know I can be the best golfer in Canada. It would be great to see it in on the internet but you know what everybody has a tough game the golf ambitions for natasha are to play on the g4d tour which she has just achieved be the top female g4d player in the world and be the overall female winner of the u.s adaptive open and to play golf for canada one day in the paralympics golf is not yet a featured sport in this discussing her growing opportunities to play at a high level natasha writes the chance to play with world-ranked golfers from many countries and make new friends would be awesome. I'm inspired by other golfers with a disability and I'd like to help inspire others. I want more women to play with, so I'm motivated to help build the game. I'd like more female players to have a mentor like I have had and more opportunities too. 
through her recent performances at a high level, it's very much true that she's now flying the flag for girls and women who have autism and other disabilities. Natasha is herself becoming a role model for others. And with this in mind, she wanted to thank a few people who had inspired her in the past, building a confidence for the future. These in no particular order include Carrie Vaughan, Nick Starchuk, Ralph Bauer, Mike LaMontagna, Anne Carroll, Jennifer Kirby, Tina Barrett, Clayton Sikorsky, Tim O'Connor, Phil Jenner, Erin Shapcott, Michael Poreka, Kim Shapcott and all her friends and family. Natasha says they have all helped her as a person, which in turn has helped her on her golfing journey, because for Natasha, golf and life have become inextricably linked. Golf has helped her to grow and become more resilient while she is keen to give back to the game by inspiring other young people with autism and other conditions to thrive through golf. It has all made Natasha stronger. I'm a role model to a lot of people back at home. A lot of people have supported me through a lot of things, so. Golf has taken me to a new whole level. I've won many tournaments back at home, which is great for my self-confidence. And golf's very important to me. It's made me who I am today. Certainly, Natasha has already shown many of us that although life can throw you some tough challenges, the support from good people and finding joy through a focused activity can lead to some pretty great things. And for this proud young Canadian, this can be just the start. This Edgar podcast was written and narrated by Ben Evans and the sound production was by Martin Maynard of Sounds Good. You can find more stories of people with a disability thriving through golf in the Profiles section of the Edgar website at edgargolf.com and you can contact members of our team through the website.